Hey guys, this is Nick and this is your recap of everything new in the Linux, open source and privacy world. This time we've got the release of Deepin 20 and GNOME 3.38, Mozilla closing down more projects, GeForce Now on Linux and Microsoft bringing Edge to our platform. Let's take a look right after this. This video is sponsored by Linode. Founded in 2003, Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider built on open source. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Multiple distros are available, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine, and of course Arch. The multiple server configurations make any app or service flexible and scalable to host a website, set up your own personal VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. Linode offers 24-7 support any day of the year, by phone or support ticket, regardless of your plan size. The simple pricing with monthly caps ensures that there is no hidden fees and a generous monthly transfer is built in, which means there is no large bill surprises like you get from AWS or Azure. Sign up today at linode.com slash Linux experiments to get your $100 in Linux server credits. The link is in the description. Ok, let's start with the Linux news. One thing I missed last time is the release of Deepin 20, with a brand new design. Every detail of the Deepin desktop has been revamped with a brand new theme that Apple might have totally copied for their latest macOS release, a new system installer, fingerprint support for logging in, and a revamped notification center. Deepin 20 looks modern, but I just can't get on board with these flat, ultra-wide themes with super bright accent colors. They just look off to me. Still, if that's your kind of look and feel, you can download and try out Deepin now. GNOME 3.38 was released with a bunch of improvements to the app grid, including app reordering and paginated folders. There are also new parental controls, Epiphany has received a ton of updates to prevent tracking online, and the integration of GNOME Tweak settings into the main GNOME settings has started. If you want to know more, you can watch the dedicated video I made by clicking on the card up top. GNOME will also change its naming scheme, and the next release will be GNOME 40, which will be a lot easier to pronounce in videos. Some members of the GNOME team have started the GNOME Extensions Rebooted initiative with the goal to try and make sure that extension developers have some solid ground to stand on. They plan to work on better documentation, a continuous integration pipeline to allow developers to test their extensions against the latest GNOME release, and creating a forum for extension developers to let them work together during the GNOME release cycle. This is all very welcome, as extensions in GNOME have always felt pretty hacky, and generally break after each new release, forcing developers to rewrite them or update them every time. Microsoft wants to build a virtualization stack with the Linux and the Microsoft hypervisor. They have proposed a series of patches to the Linux kernel to let Linux run as the root partition on Hyper-V. This would give Linux running in a VM access to the GPU and CPU directly, which would probably improve performance quite a lot in these scenarios. Microsoft seems to have a careful approach here, saying that they submitted these patches for review and are open to discussing them and their implications with the Linux kernel developer community. Now some good news here, as the Linux journal is back as a digital-only, free-of-charge publication under the ownership of Slashdot Media. They are open to new contributors joining in to create guides, cover the news, and moderate the community and comments. They don't plan to go back to the subscription and issue-based model anytime soon, but it seems the announcement was just made after Slashdot Media made the decision to take charge of the publication, so nothing seems set in stone as of yet. Ok, on to the open source news. Mozilla announced that they would close down Firefox Send and Firefox Notes. Firefox Send was a Wii transfer equivalent, but was already closed down because people used it to send malware and phishing attacks. It's now closed down completely. Firefox Notes was an experiment that worked as an Android app and an extension to Firefox to let you quickly jot down notes, but that's being decommissioned too. These two services seem to be the victims of the refocus of Mozilla on products and services that might bring some revenue in, as the foundation is struggling to make ends meet and reach self-reliance away from Google. Let's hope the list of casualties never extends to Firefox. Another project leaves the Mozilla Foundation as the WebThings platform, Mozilla's Internet of Things platform, is spun out of the foundation to change into an independent open source project. They are winding down their investment in the platform, which is an elegant way of saying they probably won't contribute officially to it anymore, and transferring the governance to the community. Framasoft launched Sepia Search, a unified search tool to browse videos available on various Peertube instances. The search engine will be handled by Framasoft, which has proven their commitment to privacy and open source, and the code will be open. Not all instances will be referenced, only the ones listed at instances.joinpeertube.org. They intend to comply with French law, since Framasoft is based in France, so some content might be moderated. 
Since the code is open, there is nothing preventing anyone to create another search engine that lists every single instance and avoid moderating anything altogether. Okay, now for application news, Microsoft will bring Edge to Linux in October. They will provide a version based on their dev channel, so it won't be a stable release just yet, but the beta and stable channels will come in time. Microsoft's goal seems to be to let developers, which tend to use Linux more than regular desktop users, use the same browser than the rest of their organization, and they hope that's Edge, although I'm not certain that reality conforms with their vision yet. Still, if Microsoft wants to bring their products and services to Linux, I say let them. No one will be forced to use them, but it gives credibility to the platform for companies, so it's all good in my book. In other browser news, Firefox 81 was released. It brings support for PDF editing, which was sorely needed, especially on Linux, where good open source software to edit PDFs is pretty rare. They also added a new, pretty colorful theme called Alpenglow, but the most important feature, to my eyes, is the ability to use the media controls in your system and keyboard to play or pause audio or video playing in Firefox. A pretty good release, all things considered. Now for gaming news. GeForce Now could already run on Linux by spoofing a Chromebook user agent, but now it can run natively in Chromium or Chrome. This is good news for people who want to game on low-powered machines, and this might even make a Pinebook Pro or Raspberry Pi a good candidate to play games. I haven't tried GeForce Now yet, but now that it can run easily on Linux, I might give it a shot. Wine 5.18 was released, and it now uses the VKD3D shader library to compile Vulkan shaders, so expect more performance there. It also fixes 42 bugs, including for The Witcher 3, Dark Souls 3, League of Legends, Neverwinter Online, and some anti-cheat fixes for Blizzard games. Let's move on to the hardware news. Slimbook released their Slimbook Essential, a new ultrabook running Linux. It uses 10th gen Intel CPUs, has DDR4 RAM, NVMe SSDs, and is available in 14 or 15.6 inches. The design looks fine to me, while not especially sleek or minimalistic, but it starts at 499 for the 14 inch model or 549 euros for the 15 inch, so these are pretty affordable laptops for the specs. If you're looking for a Linux Ultrabook, these machines are probably good choices, especially since they provide some good I.O. Tuxedo seems to release a new machine every month now, and they're at it again with the Tuxedo Book XUX7. This desktop replacement machine boasts up to a 4K panel, an Intel Core i9 processor, and can host an RTX 2080 Super and up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. This beast of a device will set you back quite a bit though, as the entry level model starts at 2,400 euros, and that's with a Core i5, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and an RTX 2070. The fully decked out laptop will go for around 6,000 euros. Lenovo now offers a huge range of laptops certified for Ubuntu, and they will ship with Ubuntu pre-installed before long. That's 24 different models that are certified to work with Ubuntu out of the box, so basically certified to work with pretty much any other distro, and starting September 2020, you'll be able to start buying them with Ubuntu pre-installed, depending on where you live. It's fantastic to see such a big retailer supporting our operating system of choice, and I hope it helps extend Linux's market share on the desktop. And let's finish this video with the privacy news. DuckDuckGo is growing fast, breaking the 2 billion total searches mark in August with 4 million app and extension installs. They don't know exactly how many users this represents since they don't track anything, but they estimate it represents 65 million active users, so basically the population of France. This is under 2% of the search volume in the US, so there is still a lot of work to do to start eating at Google's monopoly, but it's a good first step. Mozilla wants to research how the YouTube algorithm works. For this to work, they ask people to install an extension for Firefox or Chrome, which will let people flag the videos they deemed harmful and send the information about that video to Mozilla. This will help them better understand why YouTube keeps recommending conspiracy theory videos to people. I can't fault them for this, as my feed tends to show some weird stuff that I have never looked for or even touched anywhere. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, don't hesitate to leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications for more Linux news videos. And if you really want to help support the channel, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to an exclusive monthly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Links are in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!